So let's talk about intellectual property. There's three types of intellectual property. Uh, there's copyrights, trademarks, and patents. But before we focus on copyrights, trademarks, and patents, I just bring that up because you probably heard some of that before. Uh, let's talk about what intellectual property is and how is it different from real property. So how many people are familiar with what intellectual property is? Raise your hand. Somewhat? All right. So real property is stuff you could physically touch. That's why we call it real estate. It's real. Right? Real estate is real. It's real property. You can touch it. Anything you could physically pick up and touch, that's real property. That monitor is real property. Right? And, uh, and intellectual property is stuff people can own, which you can't touch. So what would that, like ideas, right? So what, was, what would be an example of owning an idea? Can people own ideas? Yeah, they can. What's an example of owning something you can't physically touch? Just an idea. Who could own an idea? Give me an example. Inventions, Inventions right? So like better mousetrap, whatever, right? Rocket that goes to Mars, right? Or what else? What's another idea? Another example of stuff, intellectual property, stuff that you There's can own which you can't touch. There's a writer that came up with the idea of the satellite. The satellite. So he patented it, and his family gets paid for, you know, every satellite he gets launched now. He used to write science fiction books. I think he was still alive. But anyway, he patented the idea of the satellite, and now his family gets paid for 70 years, something like that. How cool. Uh, yeah, so somebody, some guy invented the, had the idea for a satellite. He patented that idea. So anytime somebody wants to use a satellite, they have to pay his family. Give me some other examples of intellectual property. A program. A computer program, right? Is it the, the what has value? Is it the CD that the program is burned on? No, that's worth like maybe 12 cents or a quarter, right? What has value are the, is the code, the zeros and ones that's on that CD that tell a computer to act in a certain way. And, uh, and that's an idea. And it's very similar to also saying, hey, you know, uh, a song, right? What has, when you buy a CD, are you paying for the CD? No, that's 12 cents, 25 cents for the physical CD. What you're paying for is, I got the fortunes of heaven and diamonds and gold. I got all the money, baby, that the <laughs> bank could hold. I got, yeah, <laughs> right? You're paying for the song, and it's an idea. Right, it's got rhythm, it's got cadence, it's got tone, you know, it's got a certain feel, and that's all, you know, ungraspable. Stephen King, it's not the book that has value, the pages that, that's printed on there, you know, it's not the ink that's on those pages, it's how he strung those words together and made paragraphs, sentences, and then took those sentences and made paragraphs, and took those paragraphs and made chapters, and then took those chapters and made a book. You. you know, and yeah, it's like the ideas that he expressed using words. That's what has value. And so people own that stuff. You can't just take software that Microsoft made and be like, cool, I got the software. I'm going to go start making copies of it and selling it. Not in our culture, you can't, right? Because it's like, you didn't buy the software. You don't own Microsoft Office. You own a license <laughs> to use Microsoft Office. If you owned Microsoft Office, Sure, go sell it. You own it. You don't own it, though. You bought a license to use it. Uh, likewise, you can't just like go start selling Bruce Springsteen's CDs or whoever CDs or, you know. And, uh, you, you, you know, that's why, like, if people put stuff up onto Pirate Bay or things like that, they could potentially be liable for that uh, because they're taking things from somebody else that somebody else owns and using it without permission. And YouTube will, will flag you if you use somebody's song and, uh, and, and the person who owns that song hasn't given uh, implicit permission for that song to be put up by other people. So if I was Bruce Springsteen and I owned that song, right, I could tell YouTube that if anybody uses my songs, that's okay. But guess what? I'm getting the, the, I'm getting the ad revenue. Bruce Springsteen get the ad revenue. Right? And artists like to do that because then it g gets more exposure for their music, they get some ad revenue, and, uh, and, uh, and then other people are more likely, yeah, I like that, I'm going to go buy that. You know? <coughs> so uh, that's intellectual property. Songs, software, screenplays, movies, books, patents, right? all that stuff. And so we have three categories for intellectual property. One is copyrights, one is trademarks, and one is patents. Okay, so a trademark is a mark for doing trade. Like, that's a trademark. <coughs> it's an expression of an idea, right? It's a logo by which a company generates and builds 
trust and goodwill amongst consumers. So they own that. You can't just go start using it in our culture, right? You can't just go start go using it because then you know uh, you you might dilute the brand equity, and you know you might not be producing what they they want, or you know you might be kind of conveying uh, like if I created a BMW toaster. Like BMW probably doesn't want a toaster on the marketplace. That's not what they want to be associated with, right? And and if they did make a toaster, it better be a dang good toaster, right? That that better be like the best, like the ultimate toasting machine, you know. And so you can't you can, that's that's a trademark. It's a mark for doing trade, and you can't use that without their permission. They aren't going to give it to you, and if you do, you're going to get in trouble. All right, so that's a trademark. So a patent is for uh, an invention, right? And so you invent something and, and you patent it. Patents are a little bit expensive, but you could search a patent search, right? You could do a patent search. And uh, I think you could do it right here on Google. So you could search here, and then you could search for, I'm doing a patent search, I could search for satellite. And uh, satellite switching system, satellite structure, satellite repeater, right? And I could come in here and I could see all the different pat patents that have been you know, uh, for uh, satellites. I'm going to search for my brother-in-law. He invented the necktie. I'm just kidding. Uh, he has some patents, but I'm not seeing any of his. So uh, that's a patent, right, for a better invention. So we have a trademark, we have a patent, and then finally we have uh, copyrights. And copyrights are for everything else. So that's where you'd copyright a song, a poem, software, Right, so copy is sort of another word for, there's two, two, two ways that word kind of applies here. One, right, I have the right to copy it, you don't. I own the, the right to copy. It's the copyright. Another way is copy is sometimes used to describe editorial content, right? What's the copy for the magazine? What's the copy for the story? It's like the content. But mostly I think it's the right to copy. Who owns the right to copy it? I own the right to copy it. Right? It's something I created. So that's copyright. And so to, to get a copyright, you could just go to USPTO copyright. And copyrights are uh, pretty easy to get. And they're only like 20 bucks. So if you like write a screenplay or book or cut a CD, you could go here and you could fill it out online, pay them 20 bucks, and upload it. Right? That doesn't mean you didn't own a copyright before. As soon as you create something, you own a copyright. So I want you all... I want, I, want, I want you all to think of your favorite lyric, or a lyric, it might not be your favorite. Everybody got a lyric? No, that's going to be somebody else's material. Hold on. I want you all to think of a word, a word, okay? And now somebody say that word. Flat. Okay, so a few people said words. You own that. You own that. The way you said that, if you record that, want to sell that online, like, Here's David saying, I have no idea what that means. What's that mean? I don't even recall his eyes. Right? He owns that. He owns that. So he can do what he wants with that. And he has the copyright to it. He didn't have to do anything. As soon as you create something, you own it. A poem, a song, saying a word, an oral presentation, whatever it is, a movie, a screenplay, a book. As soon as you create it, you own it. Now, proven you own it, proven you created it, that's something else. So how do you prove it? So you, you, you create a book, right? You have it in your closet. Two years later, you're passing the bookstore. It's my book. You pick it up, you look at the back cover. It's got a picture of your roommate on it from two years ago. You haven't done anything with your book yet, but now your roommate's taken your book and published it. And you say, that's my book. And your roommate says, prove it. I wrote this book. You're crazy. That is my crazy ex-roommate. I wrote this book. No, -uh, I did. Prove it. The only way you could prove it at that point is either with a gun or a hand grenade. <laughs> I kid you not, dude. I heard this crazy story about a guy in town who, like, an attorney owed, owed him 5000 bucks, And he's like a World War II vet, like this old school business student in Fresno told me this. He went into the attorney's office and said, you know, when I served in World War II, I killed a lot of people, I shot a lot of people, I threw a lot of hand grenades, I almost died so many times myself, I feel like I'm just living on borrowed time. I'm really ticked that you owe me 5000 bucks. pulled out his hand grenade and pulled the pin, he says, you pay me or I'm dropping this, we're both dying right now. 
The attorney pulled out his checkbook, wrote out 5000 bucks, said, get out of my office, crazy son of a bitch. <laughs> I don't know if it's a true story. But it's a good story. Right? Like, pay me my money. But how do you prove it if you own it? Well, one way you can prove it is like, I wrote that book and I emailed it to my, my sister. I said, well, you look at this. And, I, and that email is right there. And we can look at Google's logs and get Google to verify that I didn't create that some magic way. And it was on that date. Can you prove that you had a copy of that book before that date? Right? Well, okay. Now we got an interesting trial. You know? Oh, and better yet, you know, uh, you know, I uh, registered with the United States Government Copyright Office. And I registered it on this date. Can you, can you prove that you uh, registered it before then? Right, so this gives you some credibility. And not only that, one of the benefits that they give you is if you have a copyright and you go to court and you end up winning, the other team has to pay all of your legal fees. <laughs> That's like one of their selling points so that they get money. Right? Like, oh, we'll make the other people pay all your legal fees if you actually have a copyright and you have a case and you win. The other team has to pay other the people, other people have to pay all your legal fees. So that's copyrights. Kind of funny. Patents cost a little bit more money than a copyright. Copyrights are only twenty bucks. So why do, why is uh, why is intellectual property important? Right? It's this question of private interest versus public interest, and uh, and by we have to incentivize people to create stuff. So we have to incentivize pharmaceutical companies, software companies, movie companies to invest the resources to make these assets, which are really easy to copy. Right? A movie is really easy to copy. Uh, you know, somebody creates a brand new drug, you know, making that drug, we make them for a penny a piece. That's nothing, right? But we sell them for $49 a pill. And the reason we sell them for $49 a pill is because we had to invest $2 billion to create that chemical composition and do all the research and figure it out. But now manufacturing, it's a penny a piece for each pill. So some other company, if it wasn't for intellectual property, some other company could come in and be like, well, we're going to manufacture them too. Just reverse engineer it and manufacture it. And, uh, and so intellectual property gives that company, gives companies, individuals, an incentive to invest in creating things which can easily be, be replicated or stolen once they're created. And by having that protection, they could then recover their investment. Right? So that's the, the private versus public interest. But then after, after a period of time, your, your protection wears off. And what you've created slips into the, the public domain and anybody could start using it. Right? Anybody could start using it. And so you get a period of time where you have a monopoly on whatever you created, and then after that, uh, it goes into the public good domain, and anybody now can manufacture aspirin or whatever, you know. So obviously there's a lot of ethical issues around this, right? Like somebody's dying of cancer, and you're, you're wanting to charge, you know, a million dollars for the cure because you created it, and you have the cure, and they can only afford 18000 Screw them, let them die. Right? Like, that's a pretty eth hard ethical decision, but a lot of times that's the decision that gets made. You know? So, uh, you know, an interesting thing that I always like to show is YouTube, uh, uh, this Nirvana video. Oh, yeah. Nirvana in the Pines. But I'm not going to show it, just, I don't know, because I've already showed you a wacky video. And uh, so, you know, where did you sleep last night? This was originally, it's a great song. Yeah, this is really originally Lead Belly. Lead Belly in the Pines. I thought it was. You gotta let me. Oh, uh, let me. Lead Belly. Yeah, there's the bottom. Lead Belly in the Pines, it's all blues song. But it, it slipped from him owning it, his, his time period for owning it, he's already dead, I think, passed. And uh, so whoever owned that, right, you know, the time expired and it went into the public domain. And then Kurt Cobain heard and said, that song rocks. And he made a cover and he didn't have to pay anybody anything. And if you look at, like, Bob Dylan, like, there's a great video here, if you're at all into Bob Dylan. Um... We're just looking here at the different ones.
Let me just see. Tad Talk, Bob Dylan, copyright. Tad Talk, Bob, uh, embrace the remix right here. So it talks about how Bob Dylan really took a lot of these old songs. People are like, how can he make so many amazing songs so quickly? Because he stole them. <laughs> Right, and uh, Eddie Gu uh, Gunthrie or something, I forget, it's one of Bob Dylan's mentors, said, man, you just take somebody else's song, and you pay it, play it fast where they played it slow, and you sing high where they sang low, you just jump it and make it your own. And then that's what Bob Dylan did, and he just took all these other songs, like, you know, and uh, changed them a little bit and put new words to them, and it's like, you know, he had his own song. So why try to create, like, you know, the perfect song when there's a lot of great songs that are already out there that have been around for maybe a long time. So that's how Bob Bob did it. So that's pretty cool. This is a good good video to watch about intellectual property if the topic interests you at all. So some co countries don't respect uh, intellectual property and it's a negative for their internal economy because it doesn't incentivize people to invest and you know things that would create products of an intellectual property nature but it's a positive for their internal economy because they have a culture of like nobody has to pay for Microsoft Office nobody has to pay for movies right and so they get all the things that have been created in other cultures and they could use them for free right so there's a trade-off there but they're ultimately not growing their own internal industry you know so some some countries don't respect intellectual property like if you go to some countries yeah man any DVD you want I have some down here, actually. I uh, bought these in uh, Bali, a dollar a piece, just because I thought it was interesting. It's, I'll see if I still have any in here. <laughs> I got some yeah, walking around New York City last, huh? last year. I got some uh, walking around New York City last year. People so, walk around selling them. You can pass these around, right? But let's take a look at them. But these are all like bootleg yeah. videos. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, well, well, old one. Yeah. Well, they were probably current at the time, right? Yeah, yeah I'm an old guy, so. It's all good. They're all good too. <laughs> the funny thing is, is like uh, over over time, as I pass these around to the <coughs> class, some of them have disappeared. So, <laughs> the people in Bali stole them from the people who made them. <laughs> I bought them and, and contributed, you know, because I wanted examples in class and contributed to the piracy economy. And then people in class stole them from me. <laughs> I don't know if that's what happened. Were they, uh, I used to also let students borrow them if they really wanted to watch them. Were they recordings I don't know if that's of okay. the film being shown in the theater? Uh, for research, school project. Is it, is the quality is good. Were they like theater recordings? I don't know. I, Most of the time, I, I, I haven't watched, up watched up any of them. Recording and somebody gets up, <laughs> yeah. But some of my favorite <laughs> things are the way they describe, like who has the Sleepless in Seattle one? But, yeah, but you know the way they describe the the product and translate it's often very funny. So that's uh, that's intellectual property. I guess the last thing I'll mention is uh, Bali. The last thing, a couple more things to mention. So one of them is Creative Commons, and there's a video here about Creative Commons. Want to work together? And. Bali. Bali? Yeah. And so here's a uh, Creative Commons. Yeah. And uh, Creative Commons allows you to give a license uh, to anything you create. So now people know, you know, under what, because the copyright is just a copyright. It doesn't provide any other information. But you could get a, a Creative Commons license, and then that will tell other people without them having to check in with you how you feel comfortable with them using your work. And so maybe credit and attribution, right? So maybe you want, you know, like here licenses and uh, I don't know, somewhere in here you, 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 uh, you could apply for a license and about licenses, choose a license, there we go. And um, you know, say allow adaptations of your work to be shared, yes. Allow uh, commercial uses of your work, sure, uh, and uh, and then have a web page put on here. And so, what else do I need to do? And then title of work and attribute work, attribute your source, da da da. Normal icon support, and uh, I don't know where. How do I get my license? Do I have to donate? 
This is a free cultural license, culture license. I don't know. Somewhere in here you could create a license. They need a little bit of improvement. But anyhow, but then I could do something like uh, going to free music archive. And um, at free music archive, I could come in and look for, uh, I could look for, um, I don't know, different songs. So I used to like this one song on here. Let me think about it for a second. Hold on. So here's a uh, tracky birthday, and it's like newish disco. And the license here is uh, non attribution, non commercial, share alike. So I can't use this for commercial purposes, and I just have to give them credit, which I'm doing right now. And so because of all that, I could play this song in my video, and it's cool. And if YouTube flags me, I could just say, check this out, here's the license, and YouTube will be like, okay. So anyhow, it's like supposed to be playing. I found this site to be a little bit slow. We'll leave it here and see if it comes, go comes up. There we go. That's okay. I could do something with that. Me too. You know, I could like make a video and have this in there. Right? There you go. This guy's got some good tracks. I like this one. But only 1682 listens. That's not very many. So pretty cool. He's got more downloads than listens. <laughs> oh, how many downloads? Twenty nine thousand. Oh, Jesus. that's pretty good. That last one was twenty four. Because yeah, even there, the listens is twenty one, downloads twenty nine. Oh yeah. <coughs> I like uh, I like some of these other ones here too. That one's pretty great. I can't remember all of them, but it's been a while since I listened to this too. <coughs> So, what else to teach you about intellectual property? That's Creative Commons. And then piracy is the act of uh, stealing stuff. Do you guys know BitTorrent? Yeah. How many people are BitTorrent people in here? Have you been contacted by the FBI yet? No. <laughs> no? What? Why? Too many viruses? Too many viruses. Carson, you get viruses? No. No. You want to come show people how to use BitTorrent? No. <laughs> Why not? I, actually, I could show you how to use it legally. I could. Yeah, right? I mean, like, there's a legal way to share academic resources and things like that. Yeah, don't okay. don't install anything on my computer, but show people what <laughs> BitTorrent is. How do you do it? What browser do you use? Um, I don't know what... A torrent client for Mac would be. Mm. So I So just Google a torrent client Mac. See if it's Maybe you can use the same one I use. Yeah, might be for Mac. Because I have this. for Linux. Alright, do Linux. Just do Linux. Show show yours. What do you use for Linux? Oh wait, you know what? Show Linux. Just show yours, man. Like how would I do that? Just Google it and say this is the one I use, oh, okay. and this is what you do, and then you go to this search well, engine. The one, search. Here's the one that everybody uses. I don't use this one, but this is like the most familiar one. UTorrent. This is a like a fork of BitTorrent. BitTorrent's so you, an actual program. So you download this, and then once it's downloaded, which is not what we're going to do right now. This is a download that you have to torrent usually, I think. So say you want to program Java. You want to get this program called Eclipse. And let's see, where is it? Download. There's a torrent somewhere for it. Google torrent Eclipse. Uh, where? Where do you see that? Oh, I just saw Spring Break. I don't see a torrent one. No, they must have changed it. 
torrent eclipse not that <laughs> So oh, yeah. okay. you get, well, anyways, you get, you get uTorrent, the browser, and then you could go to torrent search engines like Pirate Bay or whatever, and you look for things you want to download. And you get a file that has information about the thing that you want to download. And what happens is there are other people who've already downloaded it, and they take it and they they send pieces of it to you. You don't download it from a specific location. Not a whole yeah, yeah. Exactly. There's the that's the way. It's just the Napster thing, then, right? It sounds pretty much like it. Except yeah. instead of getting one file from one person, you get pieces of the file from many people. Oh, I thought Napster was like that. Napster was just one on one, huh? I think so. The one. file's origin is not traceable. I guess and that's one of the big. Reasons. And then so you get uTorrent, and then you go and you do torrent uh, search engine, right? And you just go to like the ten most popular torrent sites. Whatever. It doesn't seem like people are very interested. Every time I tried it, it was like I would be on this maze of clicking on this and click on that, and eventually I would click wrong and end up the wrong page and end up like virus, like like a. You know, you're you're just going like, to the wrong site. Like, right. It's they, just tricking you. There's no torrents there. Right. <laughs> but that's just the whole. Every time I tried it, I just like get lost in the clicking on the wrong thing because it's supposed to like the yeah, live advertisement looks like it. You really and, have to know like. Sites, I guess. I don't know. You I gotta be careful when you click on. I don't even know how I got into it. I don't remember. Yeah. You wanted to watch a movie that wasn't. It, it, you're yeah. still in the theater. So yeah. That's how everybody gets into it. It's like, I don't want to go to the theater. I want to watch this at home. <laughs> you're gonna say, well, like, I got pretty good at it. You don't want to pay for it. I know where I'm, where I'm going. Here's the last thing I want to share with you. And you can do what you want, which means you can work for the last part of class. And Carson and I are here to help you. The last thing I want to share is plagiarism. Anytime you quote somebody else, just put quotes around it and say who it is, right? Whether it's just a short quote and it's their name or it's like a full reference to an article. I used to write entire papers where I would write transitions. I'd write a sentence. And the New York Times reports this from another perspective. They stated on November 13th, 2015, and then I'd have like 12 sentences all in quotes. And again, we look and we see that this is a pluralistic issue. And, and that, that Forbes reported two weeks before a different perspective. And then I just had this huge quote from Forbes. I'd write like 20, 30 page papers in three, four hours, and I'd just like get these big quotes. I wouldn't care if they necessarily made sense, right? <laughs> I'd just get these quotes on, you know, somewhat to the issue, and I'd just say there's one perspective, there's this other perspective. And then again, this is how the Times reported it. And then we look at, and you know, teachers are like, whatever, it looks fine, it's formatted well, there's a lot of citations, looks like you read a ton of stuff, I'll give you a B. So just block quote right? this entire page. You just have to quote it, you just have to cite it. That's the secret to writing papers and getting through grad school. You just quote, 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 transition sentences. That's all you write. It's totally stupid. All right. That's what I have to say about intellectual property. You guys have the rest of class. I got to go.